Hey everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. In today's video, we're going to make something really cool. But before we get started, be sure that you've subscribed to my channel here on YouTube. It is totally free to subscribe and I would love to have you as part of my crafty family here. In today's video, we're going to show you how to make what I like to call a social media sign. Or you can also use this as a pay sign if you're doing craft shows and things. All you're simply going to need is a piece of acrylic, some vinyl in any colors that you choose, and printable sticker paper or printable vinyl. We're going to make this fun sign which has my social media and a way to make a payment. I'm going to show you how to make your QR codes, how to make the offsets, and set everything up so that you can have a really gorgeous sign just like this. So let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for for this social connect sign, we're going to start with QR code monkey. Now this one is a free site. The QR code should work for the lifetime of the site. So I did a ton of research. The last site that I showed you guys said that it would work forever when I emailed them and asked and it doesn't and that's pretty annoying. But you'll be able to do the same thing here with QR code monkey. So what I'm going to do is right here where it says enter content, just put whatever website you want them to go to. So I'm just going to have them go to my website. And then you can come in here to set your colors. So you can change it to whatever color you want it to be. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. I'm just going to do a single color in black because I think that'll look really, really good for the sign that we're going to do. You can add a logo or image if you want to. There's a bunch of like preset ones or you can add your own. For this one, because it's my own website, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this be. And then you have this custom design option where you can kind of choose the way you want your code to look. So you've got all these different types of dots and spots. I'm just going to go kind of with the standard look. And then I'm just going to go with, I think I kind of want... I kind of just like the plain. I think that'll work or maybe this rounded edge version and then we'll just do kind of this rounded edge version here. So I think that looks pretty good. So click create QR code and then you'll see that it adds this preview for you. So you can go through and kind of change it up and then if you change it you can just have it regenerate the code to however you want. So you can kind of take a look and see which style fits with what you want it to look like. So again, you can kind of just do whatever. But I, again, I just sort of like to keep it pretty plain and simple. Now you do have options for a couple of different versions of this. You can get the SVG, the PDF, the EPS. I'm just gonna use a PNG for this. Now it does give you an ad because it is free. Um, you don't have to sign up for any of the free stuff. You can just let it kind of generate your code and it does take a minute so that you can look at the ad. I'm going to save this into my Cricut folder and I'm just going to call this QR uh, code monkey so I don't forget where I got this one from and I'll call it website. That way I know this one is for my website. So go ahead and click save. Now one thing you can do is you can actually get a QR code from PayPal if you want to use that but we will just sort of make a fake one over here that will pretend is to pay me. So um, there's a bunch of different options here. I'm just gonna use the YouTube code for this just because it's just easier. But like I said, you can download a code right from like PayPal or Venmo and you can pay that way, like have them pay you that way. But this will be the um, way that will have them pay me. So I'm gonna leave it black just like the other one. I'm not gonna add a logo or image, but you can, there's a ton of different options. And then again, you can just customize your design. But since mine stayed pretty simple, I'm just going to go ahead and take a look. I'm going to create the QR code, and then I'm going to download the PNG. And again, it may take a moment to download, so just kind of watch the uh, ad here and let it download. Once it downloads, I'll save it. Again, I'm going to call it QR code monkey and I'll call this one pay, even though it's really technically YouTube. But I did that just because it's a little bit easier. So now that it's done with this, we can go over to Cricut Design Space and upload our QR codes. Over here in Cricut Design Space, we are gonna upload both of our QR codes. So click upload, upload image, and then browse. You'll wanna go to the folder that you saved them in, and like I said, I saved them in my Cricut folder, and I know that they are called QR codes, so we've got like a, here we go. So we'll grab this one, 
click complex and click continue. Now you don't really need to do anything to this. You can just leave it as is because we're going to make a little frame around this to make it really cute. So I'm just going to click apply and continue. We want to save it as a print and cut image. So click upload. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you is to make sure you note which one you uploaded first, whether you note it in your head or write it down on a piece of paper. So I'm going to click upload image again and browse, and then we're going to find the second one. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and locate that one. And the second one that we upload is our website. So I'm going to choose complex, click continue, just click continue again and save it as a print and cut image and click upload. Now, looking at these, we do have some differences in them, so it'll be easy to tell which one is which. So the one up here that has all of the like bigger spots at the top is our pay, and then this is our social. So we'll go ahead and click Add to Canvas. Now, again, you're going to do this a little bit differently. You know, if you want to add logos and stuff, whatever you want it to look like is really easy. So these are our two QR codes. So you can clearly see that they do give you the name, which is great. So we know that this one is our website and then this one is our pay. Super easy. Now we do want to size these down, but the first thing I'm going to do is make a template for our sign that we're using. So what I'm going to do is go to shapes and open up the square. Now I need to unlock my square because it's not going to actually end up being a square. It's going to be a rectangle. So we're going to go 14 inches wide and 11 inches high. I'm going to do this in a landscape style uh, for our acrylic piece. So this is the size that we're working with. I'm going to right click on it and click send to back. Now I just like to change the color of this just so I can see better and you can change it to whatever color you want. It's up to you. Doesn't really matter. Now I am going to slide these down just to the bottom for just a second. Um, and we're going to upload a couple other things. We're going to upload my logo and I think that's it. We're going to upload our logo, which I've already uploaded. You guys know how to upload and I'm going to select it and click add to canvas. This is going to be what's at the top of my page. So I know that I can't go wider than 14 inches. So let's go like 12.5 and see how that looks. I think that's a pretty good size. So we'll go ahead and stick with that. The next thing that we want to add is the word connect with me because I just think it'll look cute. So I'm going to do the word connect with me. Now, one thing I'll tell you is that when you're using a script font, you don't want to use a different script font for your lettering anywhere else. You can use the same font, but I would recommend sticking with the similar font. So I'm using, this is CLN before forever. This is actually one of my brand fonts and I really like it, so I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to black, and I wanna do an offset around the word connect with me. So I'm gonna click offset, and I'm gonna make it smaller than 2.25. 2 2.25 is a little bit big. I like a 0.15 usually around words, and all I'm gonna do is click apply. Now, one thing I'll point out is, do you see these little holes in between some of the words? I don't want those, so I'm gonna click on contour. Once contour opens, just click on the little holes that you want to get rid of. I would rather it just be solid rather than having any of those little holes in it. I think it just looks a little bit better, but it's up to you. You can leave it however you want. The next thing that I'm going to do is I want to add an offset to each of my uh, QR codes. I just think it'll look nice. So I'm going to go ahead and add an offset. Now the 0.15 might be a little bit small around these. So let's look at a 0.2 and just see if that looks a little bit better. I think that looks pretty good and I wanna use rounded corners. So I'm just gonna click apply. Now the nice thing is when I go to put the offset around this one, it's gonna save all of those settings. So it's gonna have the two and have the rounded corner and just click apply. That looks pretty good, but I do need to change the offsets from print then cut to just cut. So under operation, click on the word where it says print then cut and just change it to a basic cut. We're gonna do that for both of the offsets because we don't want to print and cut them. We're actually gonna use them with the same vinyl that we're gonna put under the connect with me. Now, one more thing I wanna do is I'm going to center the Corinne Blackstone and the connect with me along with its offset. So I'm gonna select all of those pieces, go to align and I wanna do center horizontally. I just wanna make sure that they are centered and they look good. Plus, I need to make sure that all of my sizing is correct. Like I do need to move the connect with me down just a little bit 
because it is um, touching the B in black. So we just need to move that down just a smidge. I think that looks pretty good. Now remember I said we're cutting the offset of the QR codes with the same vinyl that we're cutting the Connect With Me offset, but you'll notice that they're different colors. A really simple way to just make sure they're the same color is go to your Layers panel, click where it says Color Sync, and then all you need to do is drag that offset into the panel that has the two little rectangles in it. That looks pretty good. All right. Now you can kind of play around and do whatever you would like to do with this from here. And I think I want to add the words um, social and pay under these. So let me go actually back to my layers tab really quick because you want to make sure that you select the correct one that's going to have the right um, item under it. So like I said, you can kind of tell the difference. The pay one has more dark up here and the social one is a little bit more open. So when you cut, cut them and print and cut them, you'll be able to tell them apart. So I'm going to do social under one and I want to leave it as the same font that I used to connect with me. So I'm going to put social down here. I might need to size it down just a little. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to cut that one on black. So we'll just change it to black. Then I'm going to do the next one as pay, but again, you can really do whatever you want. If you want these to be separate social networks, if you want them to go visit your website, if you want them to uh, sign up for a giveaway, you can use that as well on these. So it's really, really easy. Now, again, you can really add whatever you want. If you wanted to add um, like a sign or something like that, you wanted to add an image, you want to add a line between them. It's really very much up to you and what you want to do. So I think I will leave it kind of plain. I don't know if I want to put a line, but I'll show you guys how to do that really, really quickly. All you need to do is click on shapes and grab a square. Then all I have to do is unlock my square and I just can make it kind of skinny and long and you can kind of play with it and put it however you want it to be. So you can kind of just add it if you want to. It's really up to you. I think that looks pretty good as far as width, maybe a little bit thinner just because our offsets are a little bit thin. So a little bit thinner. That looks pretty good. So again, I'll just change it to black so you guys can kind of get an idea of how it's going to look. And then what you want to do is you want to center it with the connect with me and the Corinne Blackstone. So what I recommend doing is grabbing those images that you want to center it with, go to a line and just center it horizontally. That'll get everything nice and centered, which looks like I had it pretty centered to begin with. It really didn't move. So that's a good thing. Now, again, you can keep it, you can get rid of it. It's up to you. I actually kind of don't mind it, so I think I'm gonna leave it. But now what I wanna do in order to make sure that everything cuts where I want it to, I'm gonna select the square. I'm going to select the word connect with me and then I'm going to select where it says white logo, which is my name and I'm going to attach those. I'm going to make sure everything's connected because if you don't, it'll move it around on your mat and then you have to try to center it again. I can easily center the words social and pay and I can center the QR codes onto the vinyl, but trying to center those three pieces might be kind of a pain. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect them. Now, last thing we need to do before we go anywhere is to Click right here next to our basic cut square to hide it. We don't want to cut that square out. We just used it for sizing purposes. Now all you have to do is click the word make it. Now I am using my Maker 3, so it's going to ask me whether I want to cut on or off mat. We are cutting on mat. We're using StarCraft HD, StarCraft Magic for this. So I'm going to click on mat and click done. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move these just a little bit further apart just because they are a little bit too close in my opinion. And then I'm going to go to my long mat and move the words social and pay up because we can really save some vinyl by just sticking them into this open space. The next thing I'll do is I'll just check on my print and cuts and make sure those look good. Now because of Cricut's print and cut options, they are going to need to be on two different pages because of sizing. But that's okay, not a big deal. We're going to cut these and print them on StarCraft printable vinyl. I think they'll look really good. So now that you've got everything kind of set up the way you want it to be, all you'll need to do now is click continue. And because we're cutting StarCraft magic, we're going to be cutting this 
on the glitter vinyl with more pressure. That seems to work perfectly for this for my machine, but you'll want to do some test cuts if you haven't cut this before. So I'm going to select my glitter vinyl, click done, and then just change my pressure to more. I'll take you over to the machine and show you everything cutting. We're going to use this StarCraft Magic. This is the Hoax Hollow, so this has the larger sparkles. And then the Deceit has smaller sparkles, which I'll show you that one. So this is the Deceit. You can see that it's a lot smaller sparkle, where this one has the larger. So we're going to go ahead and use this. I'm going to load this onto my mat and make sure it's well held down. And then I'm going to load it into my Cricut. Cricut is going to measure the mat, and then I will hit the go button. It will check our tool, and it'll get this all cut out. So once it's done cutting, I always double check the cut just to make sure that it cut through. So I just find an edge where it cut and I will put my pin pen into that edge and double check the cut. Now I will say that it doesn't seem like it cut this very well. And occasionally I do have that issue with my Cricut, especially after updates. So I can tell you right now it didn't cut. So what I'm going to do is do a double cut. So I'm not going to unload my mat at all. All I'm going to do is hit the play button, the little go button again. It's going to load the mat back in and cut. It's really important that you don't unload your mat when doing a double cut. If you unload your mat, your cut lines won't be in the exact same spot that they are here. So you'll see that it's gonna cut directly exactly where it cut before. So just make sure not to unload your mat if you wanna do a double cut. I'm gonna go ahead and let this cut this out again. We'll hope that it is all good to go. And from there, then we can cut out the rest of our vinyl. So we're going to be working with the extra long mat to cut the black. So what I do is I stick my mat under my machine and then I kind of lay my vinyl over my machine. That way I'm not working with such a long piece. I did cut this down to about 15 inches, which is a little bit longer than the size that we need, but it will be perfect for what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and press that on down. You want to make sure that this is well held on. And then I'm going to load my giant mat here. And we'll go ahead and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to pull it in, check its size, and then it will cut. Now I do need to slide my solo out of the way. My solo is right behind it. So it's going to pull it way, way far in. And so you want to make sure that the back of your machine is clear of any obstructions, especially when working with this long mat. So we'll go ahead and let this finish cutting everything out. Cut out your vinyl it is time to print your print and cut so there's a couple things that we'll do we need to click send to printer and select the correct printer from up here at the top of the screen now this can take a second to load so just give it a minute I am printing with my ET 2720 and I'm gonna leave bleed on now I am going to turn on the system dialog and click print system dialog is going to bring up printer settings and we're just going to change a couple things really quick just to get this all printed out it's going to be very very easy all you're going to do is make sure the collect correct printer is selected then click preferences and you're going to change your quality to high and then under more options at the top turn off high speed print then just click OK and click print and it's going to print out on your printer. Now we have to do this for both of our items. So I'm actually going to go ahead and set the next one to print as well. You're probably going to hear my printer in the background. This is a little bit weird. Sometimes it doesn't always bring up where it says print. So if it doesn't just click on it, click send to printer and you're just going to do the exact same thing that you did just a moment ago with your other one. Click print, change those options and print it out. And then when you're done printing, you'll need to make sure to select the page so that it will print it correctly. So again, change your high and turn off high speed, click OK, click print. It will print out this one next. Now this may take a second. So again, then just go back, click the mat, and then you can select which cut setting you want to use. I'm going to use the light cardstock setting. That works pretty well on the StarCraft printable vinyl that we are using. Your QR codes are the exact same size, so it really doesn't matter what order you put them in onto your mat. You can really just 
toss it on and it's going to just cut around the square in the exact same size. So don't worry about making sure it's the first one or the second one really doesn't matter. I'm going to let this thing scan my lines and then it'll cut it out. We'll do the second one and then we'll get everything weeded and then we can apply it to our acrylic sign. weeded out and the first thing that we're going to do is put our QR codes on so you want to make sure that you have these set the correct direction and that would be like this you want the two squares on top and the one square in the lower left hand corner so we're going to actually use the parchment paper method for this a little bit because it is going to help us um, your stickers shouldn't stick to it too bad so we're going to go ahead and use it to help us line it up so what I'm going to do you see I cut my stickers like around my printable vinyl and what I'm going to do is just peel back a corner. I'm not going to peel back the whole thing just yet. I'm just going to peel back a corner and I'm just going to fold the backing over. So all I have is just a little bit of my sticker sticking out. You can also just trim this off too if it's like in your way, which is totally fine. You can absolutely just trim it off so we'll trim it off as well so whatever really works for you and then what I'm gonna do you can see through your parchment paper to see where your sticker is sitting so you can get it lined up really even press that down and pull out your parchment paper like I said parchment paper may stick a little bit you just pull out your parchment paper and then you can lay this down by just using this method which is just pulling the backing off and then you can see I'm pressing it down with my finger to kind of avoid any bubbling it was really easy to do it this way it's just super simple if you want to you can peel the whole sticker off there's there's truly no wrong way to do this with the parchment paper it's just a super easy thing that you can do to help you get your stickers on correctly so I like the parchment paper method and this is it's so easy to do so like I said, find out what works best for you. Like this one isn't going on super straight, partially because my parchment paper doesn't want to lay down. There we go, we'll get that laid down. Now what we're gonna do is lay our parchment paper down, push that out of the way a little bit. And I'm gonna get this on as straight as possible. That looks pretty good. And again, we're just gonna pop our parchment paper up. Now like I said, it does like to stick to this vinyl a little bit more than it does with regular vinyl, the printable vinyl it really likes, but we're good. Good to go. All right, we've got that stuck down. So one thing you can do is you can either connect it here, you could already put it on here, or you can wait and put it on later. So the one thing that is something to think about is because we have our little offset for the connect with me part, you can either just kind of cut it apart and do it that way, or you can use the hinge method. The hinge method is one of my favorite things. So this right here is our piece that we're gonna put our design on. This is just an optics brand piece of acrylic from Home Depot. It does have protective coating on both sides, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel one side off really quick. And I use my pin pen for this because this is a really thin protective coating. So if you can get the corner kind of started with your pin pen, it's a lot easier to peel but it is really thin it's clear so it almost looks like there's nothing on there so just be sure that you do peel this off before you apply any of your design or your design is going to be stuck to the protective coating and you're going to have a frosted look now this coating does like to rip apart as you can see so i'm going to go ahead and get this all peeled off and then we can get started so we're ready to place everything on to our acrylic now that we've peeled off the mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sort of lay everything out a little bit and get an idea of where it's all going to go. Now I will say that by trimming this down it can really help you visualize the edges. So I do like to trim off a lot of the excess backing from this. It's just a simple way that you can kind of see your project a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and peel off and cut off a lot of this excess backing. So now 
can help you kind of lay out where everything is going to go and center everything and then you can kind of get an idea of where things belong. Another trick that I can do is I can always just take the connect with me directly off and place it on here with some transfer tape. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's going to be the easiest way for me to do that. We're going to use the medium tack from Starcraft. This is a pretty new product. I have been very pleased with this as a transfer tape. I think it works really well. It's nice. It's good quality and it's in the medium tack family. So I think it's like a really good um, measurement of like tackiness. I think medium is a great tack to use. So I'm going to cut this pretty thin and I'm just going to go ahead and move this over here. And what I'm going to do is put this right over the connect with me and I may need to trim it down a little bit because it's pretty thin. But this is how I'm going to do it. You may find a different way that works better for you, but I like to just sort of kind of get it all done and placed before I really truly place it. So that looks pretty good. Go ahead and press that down. And then I'm going to peel this up. And what I'm going to do, it's stuck to the acrylic a little bit, is I'm going to peel from the back. Now I would recommend burnishing this and I'm gonna move my acrylic out of the way so we're not burnishing on top of it. But I like to burnish mine from the back and you really just need to burnish where the connect with me is. And then all I'm gonna do is peel this off. Now I will say that um, occasionally your vinyl may not wanna stick to your transfer tape regardless of what kind of tape you're using. Sometimes it can be that you cut a little bit too deep. Sometimes it can be as simple as there's a lot of static in the air. There's a lot of factors. So if it's not sticking, you can kind of help it along with your pin pen. I usually just kind of grab an edge to my letter as I'm kind of folding my design over and then it'll start to connect to the transfer tape. But usually burnishing it will do you just fine. But sometimes you have a little bit of a stubborn letter and I will say that I have with the new blade, it did cut just a smidge too deep just a little bit so I think that's partially what is keeping a lot of the letters on is that it's really well stuck to the backing because it did cut a little too deep. So we can bring out our parchment paper again and we can use that to help layer this. So what I'm going to do is flip this here and the parchment paper is totally rolly which is really really frustrating sometimes so what you can do is just give it a crease in a couple directions and that will help keep it from being so rolled up on itself. But it's really, it's just one of those things you kind of have to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this on to my parchment paper. And I can see through my parchment paper pretty well. You guys may not be able to see it as well, but I can see pretty good through here to see if it's lined up and where it looks good. That looks pretty good. So I just placed the edge of the design right here and then I'm just going to pull the transfer tape out and press this down. So again, I'm going to give it a good burnish and I'm going to get rid of that little piece of transfer tape. I'm going to give this a little burnish from the front and from the back. And then I'm going to peel the backing off and you'll see that this one is going to stay on this piece of transfer tape. That one doesn't want to stay as well. And what I'm going to do is just replace it right where this came from. Just right back on to this design. Now I'm going to need to move this down a little bit. Make sure it's straight. That looks pretty good. So that way I don't have to really think about where it's going to center or anything like that. Now we're going to need a larger piece of transfer tape because we're going to go ahead and transfer this big piece. So what I like to do is pull this all the way out. And like I said, it's very static in here today. It's a little bit dry. Welcome to cold season. And all I'm going to do is just stick this onto my transfer tape. And then I'll just trim my transfer tape off. Now any extra pieces of transfer tape, I'll just stick to the side of my desk. So you can always just trim around a little bit if you want to. If you don't want like this big piece, you can trim that off. I really need to get these scissors tossed because they're terrible. And then I just stick it to the side of my desk because I can use it later and you don't have to throw it out. You can reuse your transfer tape a bunch too, which is great. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to be super wasteful. So again, I'll just stick that to the side of my desk. Now we're ready to put this on to our acrylic. So we are going to go ahead and take care of that. So all I'm going to do is figure out where I want this to sit. And then I want to make sure it's as straight as possible, which I can use kind of the, um, 
the line here to help me with straightness and centering. That looks pretty good, I think. Okay, so now in the world of the hinge method, there's a couple ways you can do it. I have some extra tape on my sides, so I'm gonna just use my transfer tape to make my hinge work. All I'm gonna do is peel up this bottom portion where the line is. I'm gonna peel off the backing. Now, I didn't burnish this very well, so I'm gonna have to do it slowly. But I'm just gonna peel the backing and then very carefully cut off where the backing is. Then all I have to do is lay down my, my little line here, press them down, and that's gonna hold the decal in place so that when I go to do this big portion, it will hold that down and it won't move. Now, this big portion is gonna be a little bit tougher, so I am gonna make sure that we burnish this down. We're gonna make sure to get everything burnished down really well, and we're gonna do the come connect with me part as well. And then we'll just peel this up and back. Just peel it off. And then all we have to do is start from right here where the line was, and then just fold back our backing. So you can see all I'm doing is folding back the backing, and you can see that our words are staying on our transfer tape. If you've got a little, little one that doesn't want to stick, just kind of fold your transfer tape over and encourage it to stay. And just take your time. Sometimes, like I said, when it's really dry in my house, it's just not ideal conditions. Um, but you just sort of work at it, and it'll come off. You can also burnish it again, but I don't think I need to. I think it's just a matter of the fact that I didn't. I have such a dry house right now. So you just want to make sure all your pieces, parts stay on, especially if you have like a little dot in the eye, which that one never wants to stay on, no matter how many times I do it. Perfect. So now what we'll do is we're just going to fold it right back up to where it was. Now this part, you're going to want to take slow, and if you get a little bit of a crinkle, just make sure you're not getting any crinkles. A little crinkle right there. I just need to pop that off. And we're just going to carefully lay this down onto our acrylic. Now it can help just to take your time, go slow. This being such a solid piece, I just want to make sure that we don't get any bubbles. So any bubbles are just going to be careful with. And then we're just going to press that down. That looks pretty good. And then just burnish it down to the acrylic. Perfect. Then all we have to simply do is peel back our acrylic. And you do want to do this slow, but this vinyl loves to stick to acrylic, so you shouldn't have any problems with it sticking. But you do want to just take it a little bit slower. And remember, you do have transfer tape that's still on top of that part. So, voila. So then we'll get this last bit down here, and then we'll peel off the extra transfer tape that's on the connect with me so that we could apply it correctly and done. Now all we have left to do is put on our little stickers. Now these I'm going to treat more like a sticker. We're not going to use transfer tape with this because it can damage your sticker. So I'm going to do it just the way I did it when I was applying it. I'm going to peel off the backing a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. Just a little bit of the backing. Just cut that off. Make sure that this is placed the way you want it to be. And make sure it's even. And then you just place it down. And just like I did when I was placing it before, I just want to kind of carefully burnish it down to make sure that we don't get any bubbles. Definitely do not want bubbles or anything because it'll really show up against the edges of this. So we're going to go ahead and you just need to do this fairly gently because of the sticker. You don't want to damage that portion. So I'm just going to press this down and then we'll do the same thing to the other side. Now the only thing we have left to do is add the little social and pay aspects. If I recall, pay was this one, social was that one. I don't really remember. But we're going to go ahead and reuse that transfer tape that I talked about that we're going to reuse. We don't waste. So we'll go ahead and grab our squeegee and burnish these down. And I'll cut them in parts. And then all we'll do is flip her over. Just center this. And you could totally use a ruler level, all sorts of things if you wanted to make sure these are 
100% fully centered, but I think it's fine the way it is. That. And then we'll grab the social one. I'm going to go ahead and burnish that one down one more time just on the back. And we'll get this one going. Okay. And then we'll get this one down. that off and then you just have to remove the backing from the other side so we'll get that done and then our sign will be completely finished here is the sign all finished it's fun it's a sparkly this is a really cool way that you can kind of display your socials you could display you know ways to pay if you're doing craft shows things like that I just think this is super fun you could really use this in a lot of different ways and it's just cute and you really can make it your own by doing different things with your QR codes different things with your fonts adding your logo different colors things like that you could even paint the back of this if you so desired to um, I chose not to but you definitely could just use some acrylic paint and then when you're done acrylic painting I do recommend sealing the acrylic paint with some kind of a sealant um, Mod Podge is a great option it's not my favorite but it will work to seal acrylic paint on the back of an acrylic piece of uh, artwork. So I just think this is really fun, really cool. Like I said, these are great QR codes. They are from QR Code Monkey and they work really, really well. I have used QR Code Monkey before and I really like the options that they offer. So be sure to check them out. I will link everything that we used down below. You can save 5% at 143 Vinyl by using code Corinne at their website at checkout. You can use that on any of the products on their website. So be sure to use that to save some money for yourself. And if you guys have any questions, let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer any questions that you guys have for me. Make sure to check out my Instagram listed down below as well. I post lots of fun tutorials and things over there that are a little bit different than what I do here on YouTube. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and happy crafting.